Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology News webinar. Our presentation today is entitled Quality Assurance of Biobank Genomic and Cell-Free DNA Samples. I'm Jeff Lugaliskis, Technical Editor for GEN, and I'll be the moderator for today's webinar presentation. The qualification of genomic DNA and cell-free DNA for downstream analytical applications can be achieved by a variety of different methodologies. The pre-analytical phase includes collection, processing, and DNA extraction with subsequent DNA storage. Internal quality insurance of this pre-analytical phase is based on testing of the DNA yield, purity, and integrity, while external quality assurance of the pre-analytical phase is based on participation in external quality assessment programs. Let's meet our speakers for this gen webinar who will describe how the Agilent 4200 tape station system can assist researchers with both internal and external quality assurance measures for extracted nucleic acids from various biospecimens. Our first speaker will be Reiner Nitsche, product manager of tape station systems at Agilent Technologies. Dr. Nitsche will provide brief overview of the 4200 tape station systems capabilities for assessing DNA and RNA sample integrity. Dr. Nitsche will be followed by Faye Betsu, Chief Scientific Officer of the Integrated Biobank of Luxembourg, or IBBL. Dr. Betsu will inform us about measures the IBBL employs for internal and external quality control of their specimens and how the 4200 tape station automated electrophoresis system helps streamline their QC workflows. Before we get rolling into Reiner's presentation, I want to encourage the audience to submit questions for our Q&A session after our last speaker. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can, so simply type your question into the Q&A box on the left-hand side of your screen and hit submit. All right, with all the particulars out of the way, let's get our webinar started. Reiner, the floor is yours. So welcome everybody uh, from uh, my end uh, and uh, to our talk, uh, Quality Assurance um, of Biobank Genomic and Cell-Free DNA Samples. In the following, um, I, will give a, I will give you a, uh, a very brief introduction into Agilent Technologies as well as into our automated uh, electrophoresis platforms. The history of Agilent dates back to, the, to 1939 when Hewlett Packard was established as a test and measurement company. Agilent spun off from HP back in, uh, in 1999. Over the years, Agilent has transformed itself from a diversified technologies company to a life science company. Today, Agilent is a global leader in life sciences, genomics, diagnostics, and applied chemical markets. Agilent works with customers in more than 100 countries, providing instruments, software services, and consumables for the entire laboratory workflow. The company employs about 12,000 people worldwide. This slide highlights only a few representative examples of solutions in each market. For example, pharma, diagnostics, clinical, as well as chemical and energy. The Agilent Automated Electrophoresis System offering compromised the 2100 bioanalyzer and the 4200 tape station system. For both platforms, the key application is the quality control of nucleic acids. The bioanalyzer is a very well established system that is based on lab on a chip technology. It developed as a standard for the quality control of RNA samples as well as next generation sequencing libraries. For customers with a need for higher throughput, we recently have introduced the 4200 tape station system that is based on screen tape technology, offering superior ease of use as well as scalable throughput in combination with constant costs per sample. Up to 96 samples can be analyzed with walkaway automation. The genomic screen tape consumables allow the analysis of isolated genomic DNA samples. The DNA as well as the RNA integrity number is automatically provided by the analysis software and enables a standardized and reproducible way of sample quality control. Means screen tape technology and what are the advantages? Screen tape devices are credit card sized consumables 
that are available for DNA and RNA samples in a variety of different size and concentration ranges. They are ready to go and allow the analysis of up to 16 samples as there are 16 independent gel lanes. The screen tape platform is a simple, convenient and reproducible way of automating the electrophoresis and analysis of samples. Because the consumables are pre-packed and the system is automated, it eliminates the subjectivity and reduces the opportunity for human error. At the same time, it's rapid as it only takes about one to two minutes per sample, including the full analysis, which provides sizing and quantitative information, as well as purity and sample integrity, which we will see in the following. Furthermore, the system is cost-effective as unused lanes on the screen tape device can be used at a later point of time. This enables flexibility in throughput at con constant cost per sample. The ease of use of the screen tape system is shown here. It's as easy as using an ATM machine. Simply place the screen tape device and some tips into the instrument. Add the prepared samples to it. They can be provided either in well plates or tube strips. For protection from evaporation, the plates are sealed with aluminum foil. Press start in the instrument controller software and view your analyzed samples in about one to two minutes per sample. The widest range of samples can be analyzed with the genomic DNA screen tape assay from highly intact genomic DNA down to DNA isolated from FFPE tissue. As you can see from the gel picture, the analyzed DNA samples show different integrity. Individual sample traces can be overlaid in the data analysis software, which makes it straightforward to compare samples with each other. The DNA integrity number, short DIN, functionality of the genomic DNA screen tape assay offers an automated numerical software assessment of sample integrity. Its range goes from 1 to 10. The higher the DIN, the more intact the sample is. It's independent of sample concentration and analyst. The DNA integrity number allows an easy interpretation of results and thus ensures the experimental reproducibility. In addition, it enables the comparison of samples by defining a DIN value or threshold for specific type of samples and downstream applications. Besides the DNA integrity number for genomic DNA samples, the tape station system also offers a quality metric for RNA, the RNA integrity number equivalent, short RIN-E. As RNA is extremely susceptible to degradation, it's recommended to check its quality before each microarray, NGS, or gene expression experiment. The example shows different stages of RNA sample degradation. The RNA integrity number algorithm analyzes the number of peaks and peak shape in the electropherogram and automatically calculates, calculates the RIN-E. It ranges from 1 to 10, where 10 reflects the most intact RNA. The RIN-E is provided for eukaryotic as well as prokaryotic, prokaryotic RNA samples. With that said, I'd like to hand over to Faye for the main part of this webinar. Thanks, Reiner. That was a great introduction and a nice segue into our next presentation. Before we begin Faye's presentation, I want to remind everyone once again to submit questions for our Q&A session at the end of this presentation. We'll try to get to as many questions as we can, so simply type your question into the Q&A box on the left-hand side of your screen and hit Submit. All right, with that all said, Faye, you have our attention. So, hello, everybody. The created by Bank of Luxembourg is an independent institute and bioservice provider. We provide basic biobanking services, that is uh, collection, logistics, storage, management of sample redistributions for local investigators, European consortia, pharmaceutical clinical trials. We also provide biospecimen processing, including fluid and tissue sample processing and extraction of different types of molecular and cellular derivatives. 
Also sample analysis, including quality control of primary samples and their molecular and cellular derivatives, but also biomarker validation services. And finally, we organize an annual proficiency testing program for biobanks and other bioprocessing laboratories. And we also organize a three-week full-time university course on biobanking. Today, we are going to talk about quality control for processing and analytical methods. We will look into aspects on internal and external quality control. We will highlight the use of Agilent 4200 tape station system, and we will conclude. Let us look at the distinction between processing and analytical methods and the corresponding quality control strategies. Now, first of all, as you know, biobanks are research infrastructures collecting, processing, qualifying, storing, and managing samples for, to be used in research. As such, biobanks face specific quality challenges. They must fulfill not only quality management requirements in order to ensure quality in the biobanking processes, but also technical requirements in order to ensure quality of the samples they provide. In other words, biobanks have to ensure consistency of their processes and fitness for purpose of the samples for the different downstream analytical applications. Here you can see on the left side a list of processes for which quality management requirements have to be fulfilled and relevant ISO standards containing such requirements. And we are talking here about compliance, compliance of the laboratory to these requirements. On the right side, you can see a list of processes for which technical requirements have to be fulfilled, relevant ISO standards. And in this case, we are talking about assessment of the laboratory competence. You can see that technical requirements include method validation and assuring the quality of the procedures. The ISO standard 9001 contains only quality management, but not technical requirements. And for this reason, it is a certification standard, whereas ISO 17025 or ISO 15189 are accreditation standards. The ICE definition for quality control is the operational techniques and activities that are used to satisfy quality requirements. As such, the definition of quality control is quite broad. So now we will see how this applies to biospecimen processing and analytical methods. So a processing method is a method where the input is a biospecimen and the output is a processed sample, for example, extracted DNA. Such methods are typically performed by a biobank or another bioprocessing laboratory. On the other hand, an analytical method is an assay where the input is a sample and the output is a measurement. Such methods are performed by analytical laboratories. Validation of either processing or analytical methods includes internal and external quality control for the method, and that's what we're going now to see in more detail. First, internal quality control. For a biospecimen processing method, it is possible and recommended to document the most critical pre-analytical variables. And one way to do this is by using the standard pre-analytical code, otherwise the SPREC. The SPREC is a pre-analytical coding system that has been developed by the ISPER, which is the International Society for Biological and Environmental Repositories, Biospecimen Science Working Group, and it can be applied to clinical fluid and solid tissue specimens. What is SPREC? It is a seven-element long code, which gives us the pre-analytical history of a sample. For example, for this tissue sample on this slide, this means we have a solid tissue sample. BPS, the sample has been collected as a biopsy. N means with no warm ischemia time. B means with less than 10 minute cold ischemia time. RNL means stabilizing RNA later. 
A means for less than 15 minutes, and A again means stored in polypropylene tubes at minus 80 degrees. The can be used for internal quality control purposes, as can be seen on this slide, where an automatic Excel tool, a SPREC calculator, has been configured to highlight in red non-conformities in sample processing methods. For example, here, when the pre-centrifugation delay for blood has exceeded the predefined acceptance limits. The can be applied to prospectively collected samples. For retrospectively collected samples, otherwise legacy collections for which the pre-analytical data have not been documented, the only alternative is to perform quality, con to perform quality control of the processing methods that have been used to produce these samples. And by the way, at the same time, to perform quality control of the samples themselves is via performance of different assays. In this particular example, when at IBBL we do internal quality control for the processing method DNA extraction from blood, we perform a spectrophotometric quality control assay where the result should be higher than 100 nanogram per microliter concentration. We perform a spectrofluorimetric assay where the result should be higher than 70 nanogram per microliter a microfluidic electrophoretic assay on uh, 4200 tape station where the result should be DIN higher than 8, a long-range PCR assay where the result should be positive amplification for 8 kb long amplicon, and we also perform a SPUD assay where the result should be absence of inhibitors. In the following example, where when again at IBBL we do internal quality control for the processing method which is here plasma aliquoting. We perform an impedance-based assay counting microparticles where the result should be lower than 10 to the 8 per mL, a hemoglobin measurement assay where the result should be lower than 500 mg per liter, a soluble CD40 ligand measurement assay where the result should be higher than 1.2 nanogram per mL, and Finally, a LACA score enzymatic assay where the result should be higher than 5.2. Uh, the principle of this assay, the validation and the field of application of this LACA score assay can be found in the cited reference that you have here. Uh, an list of all the qualification assays that can be usefully applied to different types of biospecimens in order to qualify them in the scope of different downstream applications can be found in this technical report, which has recently been published by the ISPER Biospecimen Science Working Group. In the following four slides, I will explain the concepts and give examples of quality control or qualification assays. The concept of sample qualification is that of quality control by disease area. Different types of specimens, serum, plasma, etc., contain analytes, molecules, that are known to be labile, which means sensitive, to specific pre-analytical conditions, and at the same time are known to be relevant clinical biomarkers in their respective disease areas. As an example, glucagon-like peptide 1 is a recognized biomarker in diabetes, and it is proteolytically cleaved by dipeptidyl peptidase 4 in plasma. Therefore, if glucagon peptide cannot be detected at all in a plasma sample, this means that something is wrong with the quality of this plasma sample, and the sample cannot be reliably used in research in this specific disease area. The second of sample qualification is that of sample qualification for specific further analysis. As an example, qualification of a cell-free DNA sample in the scope of CFDNA genotyping analysis requires quality control of the parameter, which is contamination by white blood cell genomic DNA. 
This can be done by assessment of the size of the DNA fragments, which should be lower than 300 base pairs, by microfluidic electrophoresis. And for this at IBBL, we use the high sensitivity D5000 screen tape assay. The answer to the question of sample qualification is a yes or no answer. In other words, the sample either qualifies or does not qualify for a specific analytical use. Third concept is that of sample quality stratification or categorization. In this case, we cannot absolutely qualify a sample for a specific analytical use. However, what we can do is to put the samples in two or three categories corresponding to specific pre-analytical conditions, and therefore be able to optimize use, avoiding pre-analytical bias. As an example, categorization of serum samples in categories corresponding to different post-centrifugation delays, in other words, to different times of exposure of the serum to room temperature, can be done by measuring soluble CD40 ligand with a stratification threshold of 4 nanogram per ml, corresponding to times of exposure to room temperature longer than 24 hours. As a last illustration of this, categorization of FFPE DNA samples in categories corresponding to different levels of molecular integrity. And this, these levels of molecular integrity may have to do with fixation conditions or FFPE block storage conditions. Can be done by measuring the DIN, the DNA integrity number, with a DIN threshold of four, corresponding to standard FFPE DNA quality. For this assay at IBBL, we use the genomic DNA screen tape assay. Now, to finish with the internal control and to have the complete picture of the internal quality control procedures, each of the above mentioned assays, which is used, as I explained, as internal quality control for the corresponding processing method, now each of these assays must also have its own internal quality control. We are talking here about a sample that is used in each and every analytical run in order to confirm the reproducibility and accuracy of the assay. Here on the left, the example of internal quality control material that is used in the RIN assay. The results of such internal quality control materials are monitored in a chart that is called a levy genning chart, and you have examples on this slide. Externity control. There are threats of external quality assurance. The first type are uh, external quality assurance surveys that allow laboratories to assess the quality of their pre-analytical phase through specific questionnaires. An example of such a tool has been developed again by the ISPER and is available online. On the next slide, we can see examples, the types of questions included in such a survey. For example, what criteria do you have to detect blood or tissue nonconformities? And the results are shown in the form of histograms where each participant laboratory can see how it performs relative to all the other participant labs. For example, here you can see 80% of the participants use hemolytic index to assess blood nonconformities and histology to assess tissue nonconformities. In the last part of, part of this webinar, we'll now take a look at external quality assurance programs otherwise called proficiency testing programs. An external quality assurance program can apply to a processing method, such as DNA extraction from whole blood. In this case, what happens is that the proficiency testing program provider prepares many aliquots of stabilized whole blood, assesses the homogeneity and the stability 
and distributes one aliquot to each participant. Participants extract the DNA with the routine extraction method and send the extracted DNA back to the proficiency testing program provider. The proficiency testing program provider performs measurements on all the DNA samples in one run, does the statistical analysis, and provides a report to each participant where the performance in terms of yield or other characteristics can be seen. And here is an example of uh, such a report from a uh, PT, proficiency testing program, for a processing method, which is DNA extraction from whole blood. The Agilent 4200 tape station system is used in different schemes in the UA program that IBBL is providing. In the DNA from whole blood scheme, the tape station is used to assess and compare the integrity of DNA samples extracted by the different participants. And here you can see the average DIN, DNA integrity number, and corresponding standard deviations of the DNA extracted by the participants using different types of DNA extraction methods. It can be seen, for example, that sorting out provides higher, relatively higher DIN values. Similarly, DNA extraction from frozen or FFPE tissue scheme. The tape station here is used, again, to compare the integrity of the DNA samples. In this specific round, the average DIN from frozen tissue was around 6, while the average DIN from FFPE tissue was around 5. And on the right, you can see some corresponding electropherograms. In this slide, now we have an illustration of the use of the 4200 tape station system with the high sensitivity D5000 screen tape assay in the CF DNA extraction scheme. In this case, the 4200 tape station allows us not only to assess and compare the sizes of the extracted CF DNA fragments, and results are expressed as percent integrated areas under curve corresponding to the expected molecular weight, but also allows us to assess the eventual contamination by white blood cell genomic DNA, which can be seen as high molecular weight fragments. Therefore, proficiency testing for processing methods allows participants to assess the efficiency of their processing methods. External quality assurance for testing schemes or analytical methods also exist. For example, DNA quantification and purity scheme. In this case, what happens? The proficiency testing program provider prepares homogeneous and stable DNA aliquots. The participants receive such a DNA sample, measure the concentration and purity with their routine methods, and submit their results, their measurements online. Again, the proficiency testing program provider does data analysis and provides a report where each participant can see how his results compare to those of all other participants. The graph on the bottom left is called the Uden plot, and it allows us to estimate the random or systematic error in the measurements. The graph from the bottom right is called a Lisser plot, and it allows participants performing more than one repetitive measurements on the test items to assess the accuracy, which is the distance from the vertical line, and also the precision, which is the distance from the horizontal line of their measurement method. In the next slide, we have the list of the processing and analytical schemes that IBBL provides in its annual proficiency testing program. So you can see as a process by processing methods schemes, there is DNA extraction from whole blood, uh, RNA from whole blood, DNA extraction from FFP, RNA from FFP, viable PBMC isolation, DNA and RNA extraction from frozen um, tissue, DNA extraction from stool or from saliva. And in the list of analytical methods, we have DNA quantification and purity, RNA integrity, cell viability, tissue histology, RNA quantification, 
CSF hemoglobin measurement, serum CD40 ligand measurement, plasma hemoglobin measurement, and one of the schemes that will be soon integrated in the future is a specific analytical scheme for DNA integrity number measurement. Quality control applies to processing methods where the output is a sample and to analytical methods where the output is a measurement. For processing methods, internal quality control is done through assays for different biomarkers of sample quality, through usage of quality control samples in analytical assays, and through recording and checking the pre-analytical data associated with each sample standard pre-analytical code SPREC. Agilent 4200 tape station system is useful for internal quality control for methods such as DNA extraction from whole blood, from frozen tissue, from FFPE tissue, and also CFDNA extraction. External quality control is done through participation in proficiency testing schemes. And here again, we saw Agilent 4200 tape station system how it is useful for assessment of the performance of genomic DNA and the CFDNA extraction methods. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention and maybe I would be ready to get some questions. Thank you. That was a great presentation. Thanks, Faye. I think our audience now has a greater appreciation of internal and external QC methods and the benefits of Agilent's 4200 tape station system for making the entire process smoother. Before we start the Q&A session, I want to let everyone know that this is your chance to submit questions for our speakers. So hurry up and send them in now. All right, so let's begin the Q&A session. I see we have a few questions that have already started to roll in. So why don't we get to answering as many of them as we can. Give us a few moments on our side to get us situated, and we'll begin the Q&A presently. All right, everyone, so let's begin the Q&A. Our first question is for Reiner. Reiner, one of our audience members would like to know uh, if the tape station can be used for bacterial DNA or a mixed DNA RNA sample. Uh, yes, thanks for this uh, interesting question. Uh, yes, of course, uh, tape station can be used to analyze uh, isolated uh, genomic bacterial um, DNA. Uh, in fact, we also have an application note that uh, shows some examples uh, with different organisms and also shows quite a variety of different uh, DNA integrity numbers there. So simply check um, on our website. Uh, um, there is an, there's an application note out there. Uh, regarding uh, mixed DNA and RNA um, analysis, um, of course, it depends on your uh, on your scope. What you want to analyze? Do you uh, want to analyze DNA or do you want to analyze RNA? Uh, and the dye we are using for the different kits and for the different applications, um, of course, has a certain specificity for uh, the uh, either the DNA or the RNA. Uh, so, if there would be a, 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 a big part of genomic DNA in your isolated RNA uh, sample, of course, you would see some. Uh, unusual signals, some broad humps, uh, which indicate that uh, some further cleanup of your RNA sample might be required. So uh, simply do another uh, genomic DNA digestion maybe. Uh, vice versa, RNA in a DNA sample, um, I would expect only to see it if you have really high uh, contamination level, which uh, usually is not the case. So uh, what you would see is, uh, uh, of course, a sheared uh, genomic DNA in an RNA sample first, I would say. Okay. Great. Thanks, Reiner. Uh, this question is for Faye. Faye, uh, one of our audience members asks, I've heard that there is a new ISO standard being developed for biobanks. Uh, what are the requirements in terms of QC for this new standard? Yes, so indeed, the, there is a new ISO standard which is going to be an accreditation standard, and this is developed by uh, the ISO Technical Committee 276. There are, uh, yes, several requirements on quality control for the biological resources. 
uh, in this standard. So there are requirements for the uh, biospecimens and also requirements for the quality control of the associated data. Um, there are also several requirements concerning documentation on the testing, so the quality control assays that uh, the laboratories are expected to perform for their uh, resources. And there is also some information, um, uh, just as information, so this is not um, mandatory in the sense of uh, not normative, it is in informative on the different quality control uh, assays, again, that can be performed. Okay, great. Thank you, Faye. Ryder, another question for you. Um, one of our audience members, uh, I guess, missed the start a little bit and would like to know if you could sort of uh, analyze the difference or, or discuss the difference between a bioanalyzer and screen tape technologies. Yeah, uh, indeed, uh, both technologies, they, they uh, are different in, 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 in quite some ways. So uh, basically, Bioanalyzer uh, uses lab-on-a-chip uh, technology, which is uh, um, what we call microfluidics. So in the end, if you look at the, at the technology itself, it's a capillary electrophoresis that uh, is, is done on a chip format. So in a miniaturized way in the end, uh, uh, the chip itself um, needs to be prepared. That means uh, you need to usually uh, prepare um, yeah, a, a mixture of the gel and the dye, and also you need to fill in uh, the gel dye mix freshly into the chip. So uh, the chip can only be used once, and uh, the bioanalyzer uh, instrument is not compatible with, with 96 well plates, so it's not a high throughput uh, platform. It needs to be considered as a low throughput platform. Uh, the screen tape Technology, on the other hand, uh, does not really require um, any tape preparation. So the tape and the gel is already ready to go, uh, and that makes it really easy for, for our customers. They simply take the uh, screen tape out of the, um, out of the bag into the instrument and uh, then simply add uh, the samples. Um, also, a screen tape technology enables the analysis of, of genomic DNA. So on the bioanalyzer side, we don't offer a genomic DNA application. Another big advantage on the screen tape side is really that the, the screen tapes uh, can be reused uh, on, the, on, the, on the lanes that have not been previously used. So it, it's really a very economic way, uh, uh, offers really a constant cost per sample for uh, for our customers. Also, uh, the two technologies are quite different. Uh, I want to stress the point that uh, really uh, both platforms del deliver the same level of, of data quality uh, regarding sizing, regarding quantitation, and of course also on the integrity measurement. Okay. Great. Thanks, Reiner. Say another question for you. Uh, audience member asks, can the DNA integrity number categorize DNA sample extracted from FFPE in categories corresponding to different fixation times? Okay, so this is not an easy question. Um, so, of course, fixation time is uh, is a critical uh, pre-analytical variable because overfixation can obviously uh, very much decrease the quality of the nucleic acids that are extracted. Um, so this question, I maybe I cannot answer directly, but I, maybe I could give an indirect answer. Um, so we we have performed here. Um, uh, several studies and essentially in a collaborative study with uh, Imperial College with Professor Jerry Thomas, uh, where we have compared not exactly so different uh, fixations. Essentially, we have compared controlled versus uncontrolled FFPE tissue blocks. And uh, yes, we have seen a difference, significant difference in terms of DIN between the controlled and the uncontrolled uh, FFP blocks. So, yeah, that's that's the answer I could give uh, to this great, question. Great. For now. Great. Thanks, Ray. Uh, Ryan, another question for you. Well, which concentration measurement would you associate for the tape station to get the most accurate result? 
Um, thanks for this uh, one. Um, of course, we are, have uh, specifications uh, coming uh, with the different essays and applications. So uh, simply check uh, the protocol, uh, the so-called quick start guide. We have a, a list for all the uh, um, yeah, specifications. And for example, for the uh, genomic DNA um, application and the genomic DNA screen tape, uh, we uh, have specified the quantitative range to be uh, in between 10 and 100 nanograms per microliters. Uh, for the for the other essays, it really depends on the essay. In general, uh, we have uh, standard so-called standard sensitivity essays available, and also high sensitivity essays available. And you, if you want to make sure that you have a most accurate quantitation, please make sure to work uh, in the uh, linear dynamic range of the essay, which is always uh, specified uh, in the documentation of the different uh, kits and essays. Okay, great. Thanks, Reiner. I think we have a couple more questions for you, so stay with us. Uh, one of our audience members would like to know if the tape station can be used for accurate quantification of cell-free DNA or library DNA. Um, yes, of course. Um, Cell-free DNA depends a bit, of course, on the kit that you are using. Um, we, we have shown data here during the webinar that was have been done with the high sensitivity D5000 um, application. Uh, library DNA, uh, most of the libraries are a little bit smaller in size, so here we would recommend to use, depending a bit on the concentration, either the D1000 uh, screen tape assay or the high sensitivity sensitivity uh, D1000 um, application. Again, uh, make sure that you are working um, in the linear dynamic range of the, uh, of the essay of choice. All right, and it looks like we have two more uh, very technical questions for you, Reiner. Uh, what is the shelf life of the screen tapes? Um, shelf life is at least four months in the hands of our customers, and uh, um, if you have already pre-used one screen tape and there are um, empty lanes or unused lanes left, we specify that the screen tapes are good for another two weeks uh, after the initial, of the, of the very first use of the screen tape. Alrighty, thank you. And it looks like we have our last question here. Uh, how much sample volume is required for the tape station, and what is the sensitivity of the system? Yeah, in general, again, it depends again on the on the uh, on the, on the application. Uh, we use either one microreader uh, for the standard sensitivity application, and for the high sensitivity applications, it's two microliter of sample volume. Um, highest uh, sensitivity is uh, five pic picogram uh, per microliter of um, of DNA. Um, yeah, that's for that's for single fragments. All right, thank you very much. And with that, we've come to the end of our webinar. I want to remind everyone that the webinar will be archived on our site at www.genengineers.com for up to one year. So if you've missed it uh, or want to watch it again or would like to forward it to your friends and colleagues, which we always recommend, you can do that. I'd like to thank Reiner and Faye again for their informative presentations, and I'd like to thank the audience for their attention and very thoughtful questions. And a very special thanks to Agilent for sponsoring this webinar. So hopefully we'll see you again at another Gen webinar in the near future. Goodbye for now.